that not absolutely amazing? Flugel Horn player Marcus Wyatt performing at the SABC Studio One this coming Friday. It's part of the Collaborations Concepts Productions Living Legends project. He's only the second artist to be featured in this National Lottery Distribution Trust Fund project. Marcus is a veteran of the South African jazz scene, having collaborated with some of the biggest names in the industry, like uh, late saxophonist Winston and Gwazi, guitarist Johnny Foree, and vocalist Sibongile Kumalo. He now joins us in studio to tell us a little bit more about his life and also the upcoming show. So good to have you in studio. Welcome, Marcus. Thank you. Good morning. Oh, it's what, what beautiful music. I Thank mean, this so is much. just the flugelhorn, though. What attracted you to that? Um, well, actually, to be honest, I play trumpet and flugelhorn, so, so this in this um, in this segment was, was trumpet, but it's but both instruments, you know, very similar, and it's it wasn't actually that I was attracted to it when I was a kid. Um, it, it turned out that I was just left with it. My surname is at the bottom of the alphabet list. Yeah. And so when we were at school, they, <laughs> by the you time it got to me, the only thing left was a trumpet. That is so, so funny. That's really how it started. But, you know, over the years, obviously, I've grown to love the instrument very much. And yeah. Because it has a it has a sort of a voice-like um, quality. You know, that's what I love about it. The yeah. sound of the instrument yeah. it resonates with, with the human voice. So, it, is yeah. a, it is a beautiful instrument. It's such mm. an amazing sound. It, does. it sounds like it's talking in a way. Hopefully. Why, but it's beautiful. It really <laughs> yeah, yeah. is nice. So this is a big moment for you. Friday night um, mm. uh, at at the studios here at the SABC, and they are magnificent studios. Are you excited about it? How are you feeling? Very excited, yeah. I'm a little bit um, tense because it's been a lot of work preparing for the thing because it's a big band gig. So it's 17 musicians on stage. Sure. Wow. So um, it's been a lot of work to arrange all the music for, for such a project. But... Um, it's such a great opportunity. Uh, it's not every day that a musician gets to perform his own music with a big band and a really quality big band with uh, some of the best musicians we have. Yeah. Um, and to record it and to make a DVD recording in the M1 studios is brilliant. So yeah, yeah I'm very, very uh, happy and grateful that for this chance. Yeah. That's amazing. Did you did you apply for it or were you approached? How does it work? Um, no, um, I had. It was the conversations I had with uh, with Ike Pachler, who's from the uh, Collaboration Concepts production. Um, you know, I've known Ike over the years for many years, and uh, we we just we started talking about it last year. And I know that uh, Freya Faku did it last year. He was featured, um, and so. You know, when, when it came up, the opportunity to do it, obviously I just jumped at it and said, yeah, let's do yeah. it. Yeah. Brilliant. Well, I think it's going to be amazing. I didn't realize that I was quite a, yet a veteran or, yes. a, or a legend, but it's all happening in the same, Listen, in the same week. <laughs> take it and run with it. Don't yeah. worry about it. It's a wonderful title to have. Um, in terms of time, tickets, what do we do? How, how do people get there? Um, it's unfortunately mostly invitation only. Okay, so it's so quite it's an, an exclusive, cl exclusive event. Um, but uh, it is being recorded uh, to DVD, so you know once once it's done, we will release the the recording, and then hopefully the people who couldn't get there will will be able to take a little piece of it home at least. Yeah, you know, yeah. Okay, yeah. so so it, it'll be available afterwards yeah. in the form of a DVD. Um, I mean, living legends, and it is. It's a big word to it's to have attached word, yeah. to you, yeah. and this is you know this this is what it is. Living legends planning to put your story in a book with music scores as well. I mean, hmm. what's what's that all about? Um, well, I guess that's you know that's really about preserving the the legacy of of our music, um, and and with big band as well, it's not something that we necessarily have a huge tradition of or culture of. So it's kind of hopefully to develop that side of of the music industry, which is which is really special. It's kind of like a mini orchestra, um, and so yeah, just to be able to be a part of that and to to contribute some music to you know to youngsters out there who are getting into music, it's fantastic. You know. Yeah, yeah. Um, well, I mean, you've been playing now for how many years? How many years have you been around? It, it, 1983, <laughs> is that right? I, yeah, look, I started when I was um, 12, I guess. Okay. So that's how many? 70 years now. Yeah. Uh, it's <laughs> 30 odd, I guess 30 years I've been playing. So, yeah, uh, yeah it's, a long, it's a long road. Yeah. Uh, uh, okay, you spoke about your name, you know, the surname being the bottom of the list and everything. Yeah. But there was more to it. I mean, you grew up in a musical household. I did, yeah. My dad was a musician. He was in the folk club scene in Port Elizabeth. Um, so it's always been in my life. You know, my mom was in theatre. She was a lighting um, designer in the opera house in Port Elizabeth. So, you know, it's always been in our family. Yeah. yeah. In terms of um, folk music, uh, uh, not really. I mean, it's not what you do now. Obviously, I mean, well, you're a jazz, jazz I'm a musician, jazz, but is it primarily fused? a jazz musician? But I think that people often make the mistake of, of, you know, like in South Africa, we have a lot of festivals which are called jazz festivals. But I actually. 
generally think most of them are, are folk festivals, and I, I, I don't mean folk in the in the in the sense of, you know, just a guitarist sitting uh, singing "Streets of London." I mean, I mean, uh, uh, people's music, the the music of a people is folk music, you know, yeah. and so a lot of that music in South Africa is fused with the jazz sound, and I think that's what makes South African jazz unique is its folkness. Yeah, yeah. In a way, you know? I, I I love the story of how you actually fell in love with jazz, and I mean, um, you were actually called into the the South African Defence Force, right? Yeah. yeah so you, you had, yeah. I mean, you, you know, you you were in the day of compulsory call-ups, yeah. and you went there, mm. but you landed up playing for the naval band there, mm. and that's where you fell in love with jazz. Well, yeah, that's where I met a lot of jazz musicians, and I discovered big band music, and suddenly, I, you know, my ear went, "Whoa, what is this? This is something I I, I really resonate with." So. Yeah, it was still it was um, conscription, and I ended up in the in the navy band in Simonstown, and that actually turned out to be a really really great experience. You know? Yeah. So that's that's how you spent your conscription. Yeah. Playing, Playing music. music. Yeah. You've and carrying love instruments. It. Actually, it's yeah. much better. <laughs> much much better that way. We we love it. No, they should never give the band weapons anyway. So, exactly. You know, yeah, exactly. Yeah. You had a you had a stunning weapon <laughs> that you're still you're still carrying around with you now. Yeah. Uh, in terms of, I mean, you talk about the fact that you've got a 17 piece band playing with you on Friday, mm. but you've got a, an amazing musician with you right now. Um, mm. Romy, also from PE. Yeah, Romy Bratisic. Yeah. She's a bass player from Port Elizabeth. Yeah. My home girl. That's yeah. so nice. Yeah. No, it's great. And, uh, you know, there's a, there's, um, over the years, actually, uh, since the whole South African jazz thing came to prominence, a lot of musicians are from the Eastern Cape. It's, it's, somebody needs to do a study on it. I don't know why, but a lot of great musicians come out of that, that area, that yeah. province. Uh, yeah. Beautiful. Well, we said one. so. It's a windy, happy city. <laughs> so maybe you're all happy indoors when the wind's going and you have to sort have of play musical instruments. Yeah, exactly. There's my study of what's going on there. I think yep. it's good. Brief, but you know, maybe Yeah, accurate. not yeah. very concise, is it? <laughs> um, in, in, in terms of album releases, I know that you've just brought one out. Mm -hmm. How's it going? Oh, it's going. It turns. The wheel turns slowly. It's a jazz thing. So, you know, um, these things, hopefully, you, I don't necessarily bring out albums to jump off the shelves. They, they, hopefully, they have longevity and, and uh, the music will, will always be timeless. So, you know, I'm, I'm, I just hope to continue to make music throughout my career and to continue to explore different sounds and, and always grow as a musician. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, it's important. I mean, I, I imagine. And also, I mean, you've been on a lot of international stages. And when you look at sort of our talent here in South Africa as opposed to uh, the talent that's out there, how are we faring? Oh, <laughs> we're faring more than better. Yeah. Good. I mean, especially in, the, uh, in my industry, that what I see the closest to me. Um, I've last year did a fair amount of traveling and always when I come home, there's something that our musicians have that is so special, um, really, truly. So, you know, I, I think we, we, we need to even stop comparing and just, you know, believe that we are uh, and, and I mean, a lot of people in Europe, especially, you know, musicians there, they really look at what's happening here and, um, and are quite inspired by it a yeah. lot of the time. So, yeah, we have, we're up there with the best. Amazing. Yeah. Some highlights that you've, you've, you've had through your, your, your career and some of those stages that you've performed on that, I suppose, changed you in a way. And yeah. some musicians you've performed with that have changed you. I mean, I've had, some, I've had so many good experiences in music. Um, I think still for me, probably the, one of the most special things that ever happened to me was backstage in a dressing room, not even on stage, yeah. was with uh, Manu Dibango, um, which was on the Robben Island 2000 Millennium New Year's Eve party yeah. gig. And myself and him and Buddy Wells, a sax player from Cape Town, were sitting in his dressing room. And I've always looked up to Manu and his music. And the three of us just started jamming a blues. Oh. And I just suddenly realized I was busy playing with my eyes closed. And I suddenly thought, shit, I'm jamming with Manu Dibango, yeah, that's, that's yeah. incredible. So that, that's still one of my highlights in, you know, in my yeah, life. And yeah. last year I got to play with Maria Schneider, who's an amazing arranger from New York. Um, it, it happens, it surprises me sometimes, the, 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 the places I end up. And I'm, generally I'm, 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 I'm always uh, loving what I do. You know, yeah. I've, I've played with so many amazing people, so I'm just generally grateful. You know. That's incredible. Mm. I mean, I'm even seeing here in your biography, you've even played with the likes of, uh, or, or shared a stage with the Red Hot Chili Peppers. <laughs> I mean, come on! <laughs> That's no, awesome. I have to. I would love to. I'd love to like go with that, but yeah. I have to. Maybe this platform is a good one to yeah. um, to, to clear dispel that, that myth. So that I didn't happen. I do not know where they found that. But, oh really? But you know, it comes up every now and then. Someone says to me, "Hey man, you played with the Chili Peppers." And, and to be honest, <laughs> I was I was into the Chili Peppers in the '90s, and and I would have loved to. It would have been nice. I hey. would have loved to. I would have easily jammed with it. Listen, you know I, I mean? reckon you should make up a big story around that and just say, "Yeah, well, <laughs> yeah, you know, me. 
They did. They called it me. Didn't, it didn't happen on stage, but it was a backstage thing that happened. You know, At stick the party. to that story. Yeah, 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 yeah one of those things. Listen, I think it's fabulous. You've done amazingly well, and I mean, it's only the beginning for you. You, mm. you're still a young guy. Yeah, and yeah. Uh, there's a there's well, a well today I was a veteran, so yeah, you know, veteran and a legend. Yeah, yeah. At the age of what, 44? 42, 43, 43, 43, 43, 43. You're doing good. Um, all right, so you're going to play us out, I think, a little bit later. Uh, are we? Are okay. you? Are yeah. they guys? Are we? Yeah. No. Yes. No? Do you want to? I don't know. We could, but. Hey, they we could. have to go. We they have a could. rehearsal. You've got to go. You've got to rehearse. Well, listen. <laughs> You've got to rehearse the for the gig. Yeah. The best of luck. And when the DVD comes out, please come visit us so that we can we can promote it for you. We'll so just have another interview Great. with you. So <laughs> here on the studio with us, giving us some of the most beautiful music and sounds, and so good hearing about his life. Marcus Wyatt, um, he's performing at the SABC Studio One this coming Friday. Not open to the public, but you will be able to see this when it's released on DVD. Let's take a break. We'll see you after this. Oh. Uh -huh. 